the 6th on Wednesday. They call it the portrayal of Native American people insulting. You got one female character who is also one of the main characters, but goes by the name of um, Beaver's Breath. And another character by Where's No Bra. We need to stand up and take issue when they degrade our women, our children, our elders, our people. There's a lot of traditions that we hold sacred. There's a lot of traditions we don't want put out there in Hollywood. Netflix responded to the walk-off by underscoring the film's use of irony. A spokesperson said it's a broad satire of Western movies and the stereotypes they popularize, featuring a diverse cast that is not only part of, but in on the joke. Joining me now is Jossie Ross, author of Is Coot Sick? Before Here Was Here. My friend, welcome to the show. Um, what's your response to this nice controversy? Good to see you too, my friend. What's your response to this controversy? Do you think this is something that, hey, it's a matter of satire, or is this something serious that people should take into consideration and not simply political correctness? Thank you, Professor. Before even addressing um, the idiot whisperer Adam Sandler or his latest um, silly movie, um, The Ridiculous Six, I think it's very important as a Native person to commend and to thank, show some gratitude and love to those brave actors and actresses who said that we are going to put principle above racial ridicule for Native people. As you know, that's not easy because for na Natives in Hollywood seem to encounter a certain level of antipathy historically and there's it's, it's particularly ugly against native women so for these actors to put their career in their hand and say we're willing to put principle over profit and not take this role that may or may not you know uh, fulfill our dream of being an actor that's sure. a huge step and on behalf of my son my eight-year-old son my 18 year old nephew who I raised native children and native people across the country I thank those actors very much uh, regarding, Professor, whether or not there's a place for satire, there's absolutely an appropriate place for satire. But as you pointed out, Blazing Saddles is an absolutely amazing example. There has to be some substance underneath that. And, for example, and I don't want to run on too long, but Blazing Saddles talked about a black sheriff, if I, if I recall quickly, who mm -hmm. came into town and all the white people left. It kind of predicted and informed us about white flight. With this particular Adam Sandler movie, there's no substance underneath it. All it is is racial insult. Right. So you think that the context has to be put in place, that people have to understand the substantive engagement with an idea. You have to lampoon and parry that idea. We have to be clear about what it is and clear that you're distant from it so that we are in on the joke as opposed to an object of the joke. Absolutely, Professor. It's so important, not only that we, we question and critique the subject matter, because we have to be very careful about that, but we also have to question the people who are making the subject matter, the people who are the directors, and the people who are financing these particular deals. If it's a well-moneyed and privileged white man that's lampooning and making fun of a woman, particularly a woman of color, I think that's something that in legal terms would merit strict scrutiny. And, you know, with this, I can't see of any effective or critical use of a, a lady smoking a peace pipe while urinating. I can't see what the political or artistic merit of that particular image is. Sure. So do you think Netflix is handling the issue correctly? Are they sensitive enough to the background issues and are they responding in an appropriate fashion? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, Netflix, they're interested with content. They want to make more content, more content, more content. It's a money game. And I understand that very well. And the only way that we can speak as Native people and for people, uh, you know, whether it be African Americans or, or Native Americans who have had this very, very um, antithetical relationship with the film industry that only allows us to be the subject of material and not the, I mean, excuse me, the object of the material and not the subject where we can't create our own content. And the only way we can speak likewise is with our pocketbooks because Netflix does not seem to be responding to our indignation or the statement of so many native people across the country that yes indeed this is offensive every single one of us finds this offensive you don't have to ask any further and so maybe you should reconsider your approach Netflix <laughs> all right as usual very sharp Chelsea Ross thanks for coming on today